half and half canvas will be ready to go whenever we decide to do a seam like this. And just wherever they are, that's where we're going to have a nice little treat. Hey guys, back in the studio again, Paint with Josh with you, trying to show you how to prep and play around with gesso to really get cool techniques in your painting. So, I'm going to take our white canvas, we're going to prep it with our white gesso, but only on the top, really. Not, not, the, uh, not the entire canvas. So, really just get it on there. This is what it looks like. A nice acrylic white gesso. Nice sloppy stuff. It doesn't matter. You can be thick, you can be thin. Put it on and then just stretch it out. Make sure it's nice and evenly covered. I right, don't have to do the whole thing. Maybe I'll put some down like a V shape like this, right? Doesn't matter. Yours can look totally different. Just get it on there. It's all we really want it to be on there. Really flatten it out. Pull it down. All right? Go across. Now we're going to let that sucker dry. And in the meantime, we're going to play around with the black chest. I'm going to have a lot of fun. Now I have a little Santorini stone here that I have completely blacked out. And I use this as my little black gesso kind of palette. And that way, once I'm finally done with the bottle and I've prepped all my little canvases that I can prep, then I'll have something I can paint on. So, put that down on the table. We have our Liquitex Black Acrylic Gesso. Shake it up a little bit and we'll throw some out here onto the stone. Probably need a good amount. You know what I mean? It's very, it starts to get very runny. Not like the oils, that's for sure. All right, now we're gonna take, before we do that, let's take a little fan brush, an old fan brush. You can see I've already used this a few times. It's starting to go black. It's hard to get it all out. And we're gonna get it in there, but not a whole lot. You don't need a whole lot. It doesn't act like oils. The, the acrylic is very different from the oils. You don't need a whole lot of it. Don't wanna have a whole lot, that's for sure. Now, you can decide what you want your scene to look like. Do you wanna have some far off trees somewhere? And anything that you put on here is going to be very far away and you'll have the sun rays kind of shining through it. So what do we do? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Let's see, Josh, make a decision here. We're just going to start popping it down just like we do with our normal, our normal tree branches and just wherever they are, that's where we're going to have a nice little tree. All the way off in the distance. Just put them wherever you want to have yours, right? It doesn't have to all be the same. Maybe in this scene, I kind of want mine over here. Flip the brush over. Now, once it starts going like that, and it's not this sharp tree shape anymore, that means you need to get a little bit more paint. So don't go back straight into the big thick pile of the paint though. That's not what you need. You just need a little bit. And who knows, maybe there's a little piece, I don't know, maybe there's a little bit of a mountain that lives back in here. It comes down at the base of those trees, right? So all that we're gonna just end up filling in. Just fill it all in, make it nice and deep and dark. And then anything beyond this point down will be filled in with black. See, maybe it comes down, maybe it just keeps going down this way. Who knows? It's all the way down, maybe there's a little projection, and we got a little bit of darkness all the way down throughout this whole thing. And you can play with your canvas however you want. Make it look however you want it to look, and maybe off the top of this guy. Oh, there's a couple little faraway trees, making sense with all the rest of our trees, right? Now again, the, you can see the bristles start to split out almost immediately. And you don't wanna have a whole lot of paint, which means you gotta go back many, many, many times in order to get it just right. Okay, maybe off the top of this guy, a little bit closer than those far away trees, we'll put this little stick down, and then we're gonna figure out which side is gonna be best, which is gonna make the best shape, right? Maybe we'll pull it out and go this way. And all of a sudden we got a far away little evergreen tree back there. Really far away, right? Make him even skinnier. Put his treetop up there. Doesn't matter. It's going to be covered by the, by the, um, I think whatever we built up on our brush. Get it in here. We'll fill all this stuff in. But the shape of your tree doesn't really matter because the sun rays are going to blast through it so hard that you may lose that whole thing. It'll become very opaque. Very, very, very cool little technique. So just filling in on the bottom, whatever we don't want to use. And maybe off, there was a few more little bits down in here. And you can either cover up all of the little spaces and make it really dark, or you can leave some and have them shine through, right? I like to leave little differences. So all these little light areas, you'll get different little vibrancies of the sun coming through. And this is a good way to kind of plan out your, your scene to begin with. Maybe we got this big rock, maybe there's a bit of something down in here, right? So we can just imagine 
all this stuff. And we just fill it in, give ourselves an idea. Maybe there's a rock, maybe there's a bit of river that runs through and there's a waterfall back here and it runs back down and runs away. You never know. Whatever you want to do, right? It's all about showing you how I would do it and then whatever your idea is, is the way you're going to go. Now, that's very cool back there. What if we left this kind of open? We could do like a giant mountain. So what if we bring our little trees down or we bring them up here or we come from up here and come down this way? Bam, 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 right? These guys are not as dark as these guys over here. So if you want them to be the same, go back, get a little bit more paint, come back in, fill them in, see how they get much darker. And they're much sharper if you're using a, a brush full of paint versus one that's not. Make it black all the way down the side. Nice and simply and easily done. Maybe a couple little differences back in here. Don't want it to be too dark. And then we're gonna black out the whole rest of the canvas. Nice and easy. Uh, let's just say all these trees back here. I want all my trees to look the same. Now we're gonna have a couple little details that you try not to cover over when you're done, right? So let's turn it up this way. Really sharp little stick just came up out of the out of the forest over there, right? Maybe there's a bigger, taller tree lives over here. And in order to get him to look correct, let's get a little bit more paint on the brush and just start to pop it in. Bam, 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 bam. That's the big old king tree of the forest back there, right? That's all you need. A little bit like that. Maybe there's a couple more little sticky guys that are uh, just way off back here. Gotta have all sorts of different trees out in the forest, right? At least that's what I say. Now, some of them can be a little bit thicker. Some can be a little thinner. All depends on what you want to do. And then as you play with your with your oils and you start to brighten all this up depending on where you stick your little sunshine and all that, it's gonna be fantastic. Let's put another little guy right in here, start popping upwards, cause you know how I like my upward trees. Kind of fill him in so he's, there we go, kind of more thick than the rest of the forest, right? See what else we got in here. Literally fill up the bottom you can take it just so I, you can leave a few little areas like that. Come in here and just make our little swirls. Now we'll switch to a bigger brush. Get rid of all of that lighter area in here, right? And then we'll just remember what our plan was. What was our plan? <laughs> Once everything goes dark in here. How did we uh, plan on doing that again? Do you remember? You guys remember? I can't remember. I'm gonna take the rest, just fill it all in with that dark black. And then by the time you get done, you'll be ready to do a whole brand new scene. And we'll take a little bit of liquid white, we'll cover the top, we'll take the liquid clear, cover the bottom, and everything will be good to go. So again, leave little differences, right? Doesn't all have to be covered in. Literally doesn't. And this stuff does not blend like our, our uh, oil paints do, right? It's very hard to get it in there. So I tend to bounce it in come back, get a little bit more, drop it in and then stretch it, right? Stretch it until we can't stretch it anymore. And then we'll have a little cool, little custom half and half canvas that will be ready to go whenever we decide to do a scene like this. Just like that, fill up that last little bit. I say, Josh, you need a little bit more paint. There we go. Now we have the initial idea in our heads what we're gonna do. It'll be very simple, because we've already seen it. We've already painted it, right? We've already put it together with the black gesso before we ended up covering everything. We saw what our scene was gonna look like. So use that, remember what it's gonna look like. Make sure it's nice and soft and the same everywhere. cover our edges so it makes it look like this is actually just a planned thing and we bought it from the store like this. Don't tell anybody we painted it, right? Right now, you, you don't know where you can buy these? Oh, a secret place. Only I know where you can buy them. They look like this already, right? That'd be our little secret. 
All right, we'll end up blacking out the bottom later. We can do that there. You know, we can black out the bottom right now. Might as well take this guy out like this. The stuff dries so fast, it's so great. It's almost drying on my little rock palette, right? Black the bottom out, bam, 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 bam. Now it'll be a totally seamless transition when you're looking at it on the wall. So while I do this, uh, I wanna tell you guys, go to the Etsy store, support me on Etsy, paintwithjosh.etsy.com. You can always go to paintwithjosh.com. Follow me on uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash paintwithjosh, instagram.com slash paintwithjoshk, as well as TikTok, paintwithjoshk. And uh, you can find me on YouTube, at paintwithjosh. So until we see you guys again next time, get ready to do something cool on this one. And just like that, and if it wasn't so late, I would start a brand new video right now. So uh, until we see you guys again next time, I'm going to go run these through my little wash station and uh, get them all clean and dry. Don't need to use paint thinner on this acrylic paint. You want to use water. Tons of YouTube videos out there on how to dispose of paint. And uh, until we see you guys again next time, take care from the Paint With Josh studio. Ba-boom!